Release the Kraken! Greetings fellow game designers, Ron here at Lame Dark Studios, and today we're going to go ahead and do some player movement using the character controller. Now, uh, this is going to be a very simple tutorial. It's going to be pretty quick and simple, and you'll be able to move your character around. So let's go ahead and get that started. First thing you're going to need to do, of course, is create a Unity project. So of course, launch Unity, and go ahead and hit Add New. We need a 3D project, and we're going to go ahead and call this uh, Character controller and this one's going to be a demo. Make sure that you save it in a location that you like and then hit create. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is create a ground surface. So let's go ahead and right click in our hierarchy and do 3D object and then let's go ahead and add in a plane. And you of course can make this as big as you like. I'll go ahead and just hit R here and just scale this up so we have a nice big plane. Good surface to walk on. And if you want, you can go ahead and add in a color, just so it's not so boring. Go ahead and right-click, create. We'll do a material. Let's go ahead and call this um, grass. Drop that on our plane. And then in the material, let's go ahead and hit the color option right here. And pick a color. And set it. There we go. Looks good. Next, we're going to go ahead and create our player. So again, in our hierarchy, go ahead and right click, create empty. Let's go ahead and call this player. Go ahead and right click on your player. And let's go ahead and create a 3D object. And you can use whatever you like for your player. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use a uh, cylinder. Don't worry about it being in the ground. We're gonna fix that in just a second. Um, on the cylinder, we're gonna add in a cube. So 3D object and then cube. I'm gonna go ahead and select the player and then press F to frame up on it. And you can see the player is somewhat in the ground. We don't want the player to be sunk into the ground. Let's go ahead and fix that. So I'll grab the player, set the position for the Y to be one. So now he'll be directly on the ground. And then for the cube here, we want this to rep represent the front of our character, just so it's easier for us to determine which way he's facing. So go ahead and grab the cube and scale it however you like, and then position it and the front. Remember that Z is the front. So it can be anywhere you like. It could be on the foot, it could be on the face, doesn't really matter. All right, so here is our character. Go select the player, and we want to add a character controller. So over here, you'll see that we're pretty blank. We just have the transform, we'll add a component, and then add a character controller. If you don't see it, go ahead and type it in, like so. Now your character controller does come in with a capsule. Uh, the capsule here, as you can see, represents the basic boundary of the character. You can adjust that, of course, down here under radius. You can drag that and make it bigger or smaller. Okay, I'm going to leave it at the default size, which is 0.5. Now let's go ahead and set up the movement for our character. I'm gonna go ahead and right click inside of our assets and then create a C Sharp script. I'm going to call this one player movement. All one word. And then open that up. Once you're inside of your script, go ahead and remove the start function. We don't need that. Go ahead and cut that off. We will keep the update function. And then the first thing we're going to add in here is a reference to our character controller because we need that. So I'm going to do a public and then character controller like so. And you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it controller. Let's go ahead and save that. Jump back into Unity. Go ahead and select your player and then add on the c -sharp script. So drag that to your player. And now you can see that you have the script here and there is a controller option and a place to put the character controller. So go ahead and drag your character controller into this slot. Awesome. Let's jump back into our code. Uh, the next thing we want to do is set up the uh, parameters for our ability to move. So first thing on our list, we're going to do uh, private. We're going to go ahead and do uh, a float. I'm going to call this uh, move speed. And we'll set that to 5F. Uh, the next thing we're going to want are the input values that are going to store um, the information for when we push a key. So in the past for Unity, we've been using uh, the W key, S key, A key, 
and talking to those directly. However, Unity has the option to reference a group of keys by name. So if we jump into our project, go up to Edit, come down to Project Settings, and then go to Input Manager, open up the axes, and you'll see that you have some options in here. And the first one on the list here is Horizontal. That one is going to be our uh, left and right motion. And you can see that it is set up for our left and right and A and D. You can name this however you like, but this is the name here. Okay, so when we write this horizontal name, this is what we're talking to. But you could name this whatever. You could call it Joe or Bob or Forward, whatever you like. The next one here is the vertical. This one's going to be dealing with our up and down or our S and W values. Go ahead and close that. Jump back into our code. So make this a private uh, float. And we're going to store the horizontal uh, input. And then we'll also do the vertical input. So private float uh, vertical input. like so. And with this information, we can start setting up our movement. So I'm going to go hit a new line here. This is going to be uh, a void. I'm going to call this one move player. You can name this whatever you like. I'm going to keep it simple. And then in here, we want to set these variables that we created. So I'm going to do uh, set player input values. First one is going to be the horizontal input. And that's going to be set to the input.getAxis. That's a function. The axis I want to talk to is going to be the horizontal axis. So I'm going to do in quotes and then horizontal. Remember that the name that you're writing here has to be the exact same name as our horizontal name here. So whatever is here is the name that you're going to put in here. Same thing for vertical. So vertical input, and that's going to be input.getAxis, and that's going to be the vertical, like so. And then we're going to talk to our controller. So I'm going to say controller.move, and that's going to be a function. And inside controller.move, uh, we can go ahead and set a new vector 3. Inside the vector 3 will be the horizontal movement, or horizontal input. And then for our up and down value, that's going to be 0f. And we're going to use the vertical axis for our forward and back. So we're going to say vertical input, like so. And we want to multiply this by our move speed, so move speed. And then multiply that by our frame rate, which is time dot delta time, like so. Looks good. Let's go ahead and add our movement uh, function here to our update. So I say move player. Go ahead and save it. Let's jump back into Unity. And we will hit play. And look at that. Our character moves forward, back, left, and right. Pretty cool. But our character does not turn as we're moving them. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to hit stop. So to adjust the direction, we're going to create a variable to store the direction. So I'm going to come up to our list of variables here. I'm going to do a private. This is going to be a vector 3. I'm going to call this one move direction. And then inside of our move player function, let's go ahead and set that up. So we're going to say move direction. And that's going to be set to a new vector 3. So I'm actually going to copy this value right here. So new vector 3 horizontal input and vertical input. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. So I'll do control X. And I will paste that right here on this line, like so. Don't forget to add your semicolon. So this is going to go here, and I'm going to take the direction value, and I'm going to place that down in here. So move direction, like so. They might be thinking, well, why would you do that? It was already it was already there, right? Because we just moved the variable value. Well, we're going to take this move direction and we're going to run it through a normalizing function. So I'm going to take our move direction and we want to normalize it. So normalize uh, the purple one here. 
And we're going to take that value and we are going to apply it to the transform of our object. So we're going to take our transform and we want to use the uh, forward uh, vector here. So forward, and we're going to set that to our move direction. So what that's going to do is it's going to take the forward axis of our object, which is going to be our Z, and wherever we're moving, it's going to snap us to that direction. Let's go ahead and save it. Hi, kitten. And now we can test it. And as I move, character snaps into the correct direction. Now it does snap, and it's a bit awkward. And whenever he stops, you can see he snaps back to the other direction. So we'll solve both of those issues. So the first part is the snapping. He's snapping because our values keep changing whenever uh, we push a button. So whenever you hit a button, this turns into something, and that gets multiplied uh, across these, and then that gets processed. But when we stop, it goes back to zero. So then all the rotations go back to zero, and he faces away. So what we're going to do is in here say if um, move direction is not equal to vector three dot zero. So if the value is not zeroed, we'll update the transform. So that should solve that issue. So now if I turn, I can stop and it won't just snap him back to where he was. Okay, so now let's make this rotation a bit smoother. Now for your game, if you like the snap rotate, you're welcome to keep it this way. But most of us prefer a smoother rotation. Come back into our code here, and we need to set up um, a quaternion to, ex to help smooth out that rotation. So it's a private quaternion. And this is going to be um, rotate to inside of our movement for our player. We're going to say rotate to. That's going to be equal to a quaternion dot look rotation. So in here, our forward direction is going to be which, wherever we're looking. So we're going to say move direction. And then our up value. So vector 3 dot Now we can take this value and we can modify our rotation code here. So instead of doing transform forward, we can do transform rotation and we'll set that equal to quaternion dot rotate toward. And inside here, this takes a few different values. Uh, the first one is it wants to know what quaternion are we rotating from and then it wants to know the quaternion we're rotating to. And then it wants the max angle uh, that we're changing, the amount that we're changing over time. So the first value is pretty easy. That one's going to be our current rotation. So whatever the current rotation is. So transform dot rotation. And then the next value is going to be the thing we want to rotate to, which is going to be our rotate to value. So rotate two. And then the next thing is going to be how fast we're going to rotate. So this is going to be our rotation rate. So rotation rate. And we're going to do that times our frame rate, which is time dot delta time, like so. And I'm going to come back. I'm just going to go ahead and hit on rotation rate. I'm going to hit, hit enter. That way I can break the line. This just makes it easier to read on one screen. So it's just not off the screen over there. For the rotation rate, you can see it's red and angry. That's because we haven't set it yet. So I'm going to come up to our variables and do a private float rotation rate. And this is how fast you're going to rotate. Um, now, the bigger the rotation rate, the faster you're going to rotate. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 512, but you can change it to whatever you like. So 512F, I'll go ahead and save it, hit play. Now when I turn, I rotate nice and smooth toward the direction. Nice. Now there is one other thing I want to fix, and that is 
if you let go of a button, do you notice how there's a delay and how quickly it stops? Well, that can be fixed pretty quickly. We're going to jump back into Edit, Project Settings. And then inside of our movement, we're going to take our horizontal value, come on down to our gravity. And you can see the gravity here if you hover over. It says speed in units um, that the output value falls toward neutral. Okay, so right now we're at a value of 3. I'm going to go ahead and just change this to 10. And that's going to give us a pretty instantaneous stop. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the vertical as well. So vertical, change the 3 to a 10. Again, I'm, I'm adjusting the gravity, not the sensitivity. Sensitivity is how fast it moves. Gravity is how slow it, like, or how quickly it slows down. I'm not sure why they named it that way. It's just how they did it. But we'll go ahead and uh, close that. Hit play. And now if I move and let go, it's a pretty quick stop, and we can move our character around. Awesome. In the next one, we're going to go ahead and look at how to set up the camera uh, for first person, third person, and top-down view. Okay, so stay tuned, and I shall see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my channel. Misty and I both thank you. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, we are at 1,500 subscribers. Woo! That is awesome possum. Rocket Flip is out if you have not taken a look at my latest devlog. Uh, it is in open beta testing, so if you want to grab a copy and test it out, see how it plays, uh, leave some feedback, uh, it really helps me out. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I shall see you next time.